Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. When building a filter, it is important to know the actual value of the actual components. To measure them, you need something that can characterize them at the same frequencies you plan to filter around. For that, you can use something like a handheld LCR, like the one that the Element 14 community sent me. In this episode, I show you a simple filter example and why measuring the parts matter. Also, we're going to talk about why breadboards might be terrible. Let's go measure. I am not going to go into the details of how filters work, but here are some basics we need for the rest of the video. Using a resistor and capacitor, you can construct a simple first order low pass passive filter. A Bode plot has frequency on the X axis and magnitude on the Y. Frequencies at zero dB pass through the filter and then start to attenuate. The cutoff frequency is determined by where the response drops by three dB. Also at that point, half of the power signal is lost, which translates to 0.707 of the voltage. That 0.707 number is going to matter later on. Next, let's do a quick calculation and then build a filter. For this example, let's use a one nanofarad capacitor and a one kilo ohm resistor as a low pass filter. We need to calculate the cutoff frequency. For that, I am using this web-based calculator. You can find a link to it in the show notes over on the Element 14 community. Using our nominal values, the low-pass filter's cutoff frequency is, let's say 159 kilohertz. Next, I used the breadboard and connected up a resistor and capacitor as a low-pass filter. For the input, I am using the waveform generator built into a scope and connecting two scope probes. They're measuring the input and output. On the scope, the green waveform is the input and orange is the output. Right now, they are basically on top of each other. On the bottom, there are measurements to show their peak-to-peak -peak voltage and the input frequency. Step one is to normalize the input voltage to be 1.0 volts, so that when I change the input frequency, we can see the output voltage slowly drop. Since I am looking for the cutoff frequency or the negative 3 dB point, I keep raising the frequency until the output voltage drops to 707 millivolts. The other clue that we hit the cutoff is that the phase difference is close to 45 degrees. The calculator said the cutoff should be 159 kilohertz, and our measurement shows 177 kilohertz. I hope it is obvious it's because we do not use the real values for capacitor and resistor in the calculator. If you have never used an LCR, especially a handheld, I did an entire episode on the basics of these tools. The short explanation is that they measure the impedance of a resistor, capacitor, or like in this case, an inductor. They can also tell us their reactance, ESR, and dissipation factor, which are all related. Last, remember impedance means resistance or reactance at a frequency. A meter like this one measures components with different frequencies. Comparing that to a DMM, which effectively only does a DC measurement. See how these two meters read completely different capacitance values and how the capacitance changes as the frequency goes up. Now our cutoff frequency is 159 kilohertz, but the closest we can get with this meter is 100 kilohertz. At least it's not DC. Removing the resistor from the circuit and measuring it in the meter, we see that its actual value is 979 ohms. For the capacitor, I let the value settle for a little while and it came out to be 891 picofarads. Using these values in the same calculator, the expected cutoff frequency should have been around 182 kilohertz. So we're still off by a little bit. Let's think about a few reasons. First, it could be the accuracy of the meter, but it is brand new and I did run its compensation or calibration routine before making these measurements. Passive oscilloscope probes like these have a large impedance, like 10 million ohms, but they also have about 10 picofarads of capacitance, which we haven't accounted for anywhere. Given that our capacitor is only one nanofarad, maybe that matters. But there is one other component that really matters. Can you guess which one it is? Let's literally remove the breadboard from the equation. I grabbed a small piece of strip board, removed the parts from the breadboard, and soldered them into place, which replicated the previous circuit. While doing this, I made a nice solid ground point for all of the connections, and then trimmed the components leads to be as small as possible. Hopefully this minimizes their parasitic capacitance and inductance. Just like before, the waveform generator is providing the input, with the scope measuring both the input and output. 
With just a minor adjustment to the input frequency, we can now see the negative 3 dB or cutoff point is 182 kilohertz. Can you believe the difference it made to just move to a PCB? Now, I'm not saying breadboards are bad or terrible, despite what I said at the beginning, but keep in mind, their parasitics do play a role in analog measurements like this one. For me, I'm pretty excited to see a difference between a breadboard and PCB version of a circuit when we use the same components. So we use the LCR to calculate and measure the same filter performance, or at least cutoff frequency. Follow the link below to the Element 14 community where you can find info on the handheld LCR meter I used in this episode. As always, remember that is the best place to ask me questions because I'm more likely to see them and I always respond there. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video. For now, it is time for me to get back to handheld characterization of all the passives on my electronics workbench.